Hi, I'm Steve Weierman and today I'm going to talk about standard input in Java. This is the fifth video in a series on getting started with Java. Uh, for more information, visit www.iteran.com. Now today I actually don't have any slides for you. Instead, what I want to do is talk a little bit about another really important resource that you should be referencing uh, if you are becoming a Java programmer, and that's the uh, Java API documentation. You can find that at docs.oracle.com slash javasc slash 7 slash docs slash API. Yes, I know that's a lot to remember. You don't actually need to remember it. Just go to Google, type in Java 7 API, and you'll be brought to this. Or if you go to the Oracle website, you should be able to find it through one of their links. Now, this is everything you ever wanted to know about Java, and then some. There is also, on the Oracle website, a very good Java online tutorial. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. That should be it. <clears throat> so under Java SE, if, if you search through these links, you'll be able to find it, or if you just search for Oracle, Oracle Java Tutorial. And there's... And it'll be somewhere there. And it's a good series of lessons. Uh, a lot of the information uh, they provide is some of the information I provide. Uh, they have a lot more there. This is just an introductory video, so I don't go as in-depth as uh, what you would see uh, in the online documentation. But it's important to know those resources are there, especially when you're learning a new language. Another thing, I know I'm going off on an aside right now, uh, but another thing that's really important to do is to be sure to try out these exercises and program every day because the only way you can really learn programming is by doing programming. So having rambled on about all that, uh, let's get to the point of today's lecture which is uh, the Java Scanner. Scanner is a well, as the documentation says, a simple text scanner which can parse primitive types and strings using regular expressions. We're not going to talk about regular expressions today. We probably won't get to regular expressions in this series. But the whole point being, Scanner allows us to access input to get input from the console, from the user. So now we actually provide the user with a way of typing something in at the keyboard and making use of whatever the user types in. So in order to use Scanner, Scanner's a class, we need to create a Scanner object. So we need to create an object of type Scanner, and that object will be what we use to uh, get the input from the user. So I could, um, there's not really too much to say about this, I'll just show you how it's done. Let me jump to NetBeans. So you'll see here, this is our same payroll example from the last time. I've made a few changes. I took out all the initial values here, and I've uh, combined some lines. So all we have here is the declarations. We don't have any initialization. Uh, but it's the same four variables we were working with before, and one string. I also put in some system.out.print. Notice I didn't put print ln. This time I don't want to print that new line character at the end. I want what happens next to happen on that same line. The reason why I want that is because I'm going to prompt the user to type something in, and I don't and I want that user to be able to type it in on the same line. So let me uh, get started here. First thing I need to do is uh, create a new scanner object. And actually, that's not the first thing I need to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Scanner in, I'll call this object in because it's for input, equals new scanner 
system.in. And you'll notice I get red lines here. And those red lines are occurring because I've not imported Scanner. Scanner is one of those uh, classes that's part of the API, but it's not always used. So uh, it's, in, it's in one of the uh, packages that doesn't get imported automatically. So what we've got to do is we've got to import Scanner. And the way we do that Scanner is in the java.util package. I'm just going to go outside of my class, so before my class header, after my package name, and just type in import java.util. And you'll notice it will give me hints dot scanner. And that takes care of the red line. Now, immediately after this line here, where I have enter employee name, I'm going to get the employee name. The employee uh, is going to be stored in the string object employee. So, E-M-P-L-O-Y-E -E equals in dot next line. Then I need to get the hourly rate. Hourly rate equals in dot next double. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm calling methods, and these methods know how to get that input from the keyboard. So I don't have to actually worry about how that's being done. I can just take it for granted that it works, and I can use those methods. So the user will type in something, some string, and hit enter and that value will be stored in that uh, variable. Then we need hours worked per week. So hours worked per week equals in dot next int so that's an integer. And then finally, uh, number of weeks. And if I start typing here, and I start typing number of weeks, uh, NetBeans provides me with a shortcut. And if I press control and space, it'll give me a hint. And I want number of, there we go, weeks worked. And if I hit enter and select what I want, it, it just finishes typing it for me. In dot next int. So now instead of hard coding or putting the values inside my source code, I uh, asked the user to type in those values. So let's run this and see if it works. Enter employee name, I'll just type in my own name. Enter hourly rate. Uh, let's say it's my tutoring job, so I'll put in my hourly rate for tutoring. Uh, enter hours of work per week. Again, let's make sure that the, um, that the overtime thing works, although we tr tested that last week, so it should work. So I'll put in something more than 40 hours, we'll say 50 hours, and then enter number of weeks, we'll put in two weeks. So if I were to have worked uh, two weeks tutoring, uh, 50 hours per week, for two weeks, I would have made $3,300. Uh, not entirely accurate, of course, because as someone who's employed for myself, uh, I don't get paid overtime. So, but that gives you an example of how this program works, and it ran successfully without any problems. Uh, the only thing you got to watch out for is if I run this again. Uh, 
different name. Hourly rate, uh, let's put in something else. Um, and that causes an error. So we don't handle any uh, error checking at this point in our program because uh, that's a little bit too advanced uh, for where we are right now. But, that, but we have a working program. And as long as the user's careful about how they type something in, uh, this works just fine. Um, that's all we have for today. So check back tomorrow for another video.